Marty, it's time to look at some adult animated movies. But only adult in the context that it's too offensively stupid for children to watch without losing brain cells. Often these cartoons will dish out vulgar or shocking scenes, not to enhance the narrative or to speak more deeply about adult messages, but instead just to try and shock viewers into paying attention. I mean, I've no problem with a bit of vulgarity. I just like it to mean something more than just being there purely to try and shock the audience. But these animated movies are just the real deal in smutty, lowbrow garbage. So let's check out the top six worst adult animated movies. Generally, the more offensively bad the movie is, the more close it'll be to number one. The less effort they put into treating the audience with intelligence, and the more pointless frat boy garbage means it'll probably stink the worst. But as always, as I think it's important to say, if you do like these movies, that's great. It's just my silly personal opinion. Taste is a very subjective thing, and I'm glad if you can enjoy these movies when I can't. Also, just a heads up, while I have censored some things, there might be a few more adult scenes and adult themes in this one. Anyway, on to the countdown. Number 6. Nerdland. Wow. This is so annoying, it makes my brain hurt. Okay, that's... that's enough for today. Stop when you're hot. Ladies and gentlemen, the muse has left the building! When I saw the opening was an old geezer shooting up a strip club, I knew I was watching the abrupt end of a screenwriter ever working again. You see, Elliot dreams of being a screenwriter, and his buddy Paul wants to be an actor. Unfortunately, the two show the social grace and unbridled insanity of whoever thought this movie would actually be a good idea. I think it's supposed to be a commentary on modern society and commercialism. Unfortunately, it attempts this by endlessly reveling in the foul side of 21st century pop culture, resulting in something so distasteful and vile that I feel like a chemical shower after watching it. Just to name a few, we have scenes of humiliation, rear cracks, and exploitation. It's just... ugh. The two go about continually failing in their job attempts, leading to numerous desperate-feeling gross-out scenes. A handful, at most. Not many. Preferably strangers. Ah, oh, jeez. Really? I guess this could be called a powerful message about the warping of the public consciousness in their desire to mindlessly work to be publicly visible, even at the loss of their humanity? No, no, it's just stupid. So they try to sum up the urge to murder people, but can't murder people and instead become famous through being witnesses to a murder and... I'm sorry, are you done too? Yeah, let's, let's move on. Nerdland is a supreme waste of your time and attention. That's just... Oh god, it's awful. And the fifth worst adult animated movie is... The Trouble with Turkel, the American version. Okay, to start with, the Danish version is much better, but the American translation? You, you can't just hit him! What are you gonna do about it, cry baby? Uncle Stuart? You cannot leave bruises. Well, it sounds like the voice actors just made up their lines as they went along, throwing in a swear word every four seconds just to be sure they're being edgy, resulting in something as rancid as nine-month-old Danish cheese churned through a sewer pipe on taco night. You're such a bitch. Get your black ass out of my house. Some audiences seem to like this one, but as for me, I agree with the other critics in calling this American version trash. To me, Turkel just seems to assume it can shove a bunch of crude, violent, paper-thin jokes in your face and just see what sticks. Unfortunately, nothing sticks at all. So obviously we get plenty of shock scenes. I think they're meant to be shock humour, but humour is far too generous a word for anything in Turkle. I mean, obviously, the animation's also gonna look plastic and horrible. Their eyes look like ping pong balls, and frankly, these characters make fanboy and chum chum actually look handsome. But what's amazing is, even the trailer feels like it was thrown together in 10 minutes. Indican Pictures presents the cutest family film of the year. Yeah! No. Whatever! The lip syncing is garbage. Fat doors and Toko are getting it on. No! The volume is up and down like a jackrabbit. The voice takes are obnoxious. It's just, what audience do they expect this to appeal to? The wild pygmy marmoset chimpanzee demographic? The most fascinating thing about this movie is just how many categories this thing fits into. Get this. It's an adult animated musical dark 
parody comedy horror film. Try saying that five times fast. So what is this fugly art house animation about? Turkle's a criminally insane sixth grader who's picked on at school, and slightly psychopathic, and finally gets some validation by picking on his best friend's sister. And this makes her decide to jump out a window. Turkle apparently becomes more popular for this? Yeah, I'm sorry, this one's pretty tasteless to me too. And the story's tedious, with no real humor or cultural commentary to justify the offense. And it's not like the offense is any great challenge to my worldview. It's just rotten human beings that are played for laughs. Your DVD is much better dismembered with a sledgehammer and sent to your local garbage dump, and then incinerated. Number four, Heavy Metal 2000. This one's generic, silly, and pretty teen pandering, but sadly, not even hilariously bad. Like, it's just more a sad, lazy recreation of the original than anything with actual substance. Was it good for you? The problem is that many of these action cliches are literally decades old at this point, since the original heavy metal it was based off was made in 1981, and it lacks any of the finesse or tenderness of the original. I mean, on a purely visceral level, the action scenes are kind of interesting, and the two women, Julie and Carrie, are beautiful to look at. I guess if I was 15, these ladies might be enough pubescent entertainment for the 90 minute runtime for me, but as an adult, I just wish I had any investment in the movie they were in. The original Heavy Metal had a power, an unbalanced embracing of the grunge, lawless, yet provocative atmosphere of their world. But this movie just feels like a lazy rehash. I recommend watching the original Heavy Metal instead. And the third worst adult animated movie is... The Nine Lives of Fritz the Cat. This was made at a time where adult animation was still fairly young. Despite Felix the Cat and Mickey Mad Doctor days, cartoons were still somehow ingrained as something for kids. A sequel about Fritz smoking a joint and reminiscing about the good old days as his wife yells at him. What could possibly go wrong? Originally I was thinking of maybe Fritz the Cat for this list, as it felt like it was made by a group of stoners trying to make the first X-rated animated film. But I feel the original had some historical significance. The sequel though? It's basically just Fritz imagining his life different and using drugs to escape his wife's legitimate frustrations at him. The weird part is, the show acts like we should be more interested in Fritz's stoned fantasies than his reality, but instead, I found his fantasies tedious, and the characters in it felt one note. Instead, the only part I actually found myself invested in was when Fritz woke up from his stupor and listened to his wife for a second. I think I actually would have liked the story about how these two came together, and the tragic process of what slowly drove them apart. And then we just get these weird disconnected scenes that aren't even remotely entertaining. Like flashes of random footage of conflicts from history, with Fritz dating a lady he met in the background. And sometimes these trippy music videos go on for a good eight minutes straight. I can't even call this movie a tragedy because I don't feel any empathy for Fritz. Although he's on welfare, and his house looks like it's been kicked in after a police drug bust, and his wife's beside herself, a lot of it just looks like it's due to Fritz being a negligent husband and father. He won't even spend time with his son. You ever take him to the ball game? You ever take him fishing? How about fishing? Why don't you take your own son fishing? I actually just kind of feel bad for the wife and son. Why doesn't he bond with his son? But no, we just watch him reminisce on far more boring stories than his own reality. Suck my dick. How? How am I supposed to relate to that? Lines like that just make Fritz feel like scum. Nine Lives of Fritz is atmospheric? I can definitely give it that. And I guess there's value in that we just see how seedy, rough, and hopeless life can get for people in these situations or parts of town, but it was way too tedious for me to get immersed in that world. And the second worst adult animated movie is The Haunted World of El Superbisto. Shock and horror, what a surprise! More gratuitous violence, nudity, trashy scenes, and individuals with no sense of value for human life or dignity. This movie, it's, well, it's, uh... It fascinates me how adult shows like El Super Beasto manage to make nudity so, well, unsexy. Like, any subtlety, timing, art and nuance is just gone, while also managing to make gore so unshocking, deadpan and dull. 
Once again, both are purely there for the sake of shock and shown endlessly, making both about as interesting and special as an accountant's cubicle pen collection. Though that's probably not doing justice to an accountant's ability to spruce up his cubicle. Anyway, it doesn't help that Super Beasto himself is supremely unlikable. Oh, fine. Take a headshot and here, a Super Beasto bumper sticker. Put it on your shit <laughs> car. Now lay off! And just reprehensible in every way. He's exploitative, treats his fans like garbage, treats people like objects to be used. Oh, sure, use a man's balls to beat the hell out of something and then don't wait for him! His most endearing quality is we only have to deal with him for 75 minutes. In production, we basically get the power of two completely unrestrained directors in both animation and film. The first you may recognize as Spumco, the genius behind the worst cartoon episode of all time, from Ren and Stimpy Adult Party Cartoon. So we can be sure that every fungus-ridden toenail will be given a long, uncomfortable close-up. And of course, Rob Zombie, who's a founding member of the heavy metal band White Zombie. So here we have a film director wanting to push all your buttons, crossed with an animation director desperately attempting to give you the grossest thing ever put to paper. Strangely enough though, Super Beasto isn't even that shocking to me. It was just dull. It's like modern family guy dull. We know it's gonna be unnecessarily gory, full of untitillating nudity, characters will all act stupid or evil, and the novelty and shock of these is worn off so completely by this point that it's like someone continually punching me in the shoulder. The pain may be less, but it's probably still causing me internal bruising. Oh look, we have more ladies' chest parts. Blood, gore, more breasticles, more violence. And again, I've nothing against some adult titillation, but they managed to make these things boring. And how could two directors with free range of every raunchy, gory, sexually soaked reference on the planet make something so drab and wretched? Some people may say, I just don't get the joke of this one, and that's fair. But personally, I believe I got whatever little joke there was. And that joke made me need another year of trauma therapy. To me anyway, El Super Bisto is bad. I figure you'll find this movie either boring or offensive. Either way, we both lose. And before we get to number one, just a couple of quick honorable and dishonorable mentions. For the honorable mentions, Sausage Party. Gah, I'm mixed on Sausage Party. I like the general existential themes. I also like that the movie is giving a message about religious skepticism, even if you're in the minority. And yes, it's smutty and immature, but all in all, I felt like I gained a little more than I lost from watching it once. And I should also make it clear, I do understand why this movie needs to be smutty. While I've personally had 15 years to wrestle with secular self-actualization, I get that some people have not had that privilege. And for people who are just coming out of religious culture into secularity or their own independent beliefs, hedonism may be their first answer to being alone in the universe. I don't like it in Rick and Morty either, but I think that cynicism and hedonism is a catharsis for people who've grown up in an oppressively religious culture. And if this is what they need in their first steps towards personal secular self-actualization, then good for them. You can't just slam their beliefs, you have to show them that there's a better way. You need to inspire them like you inspired me. You need to give them hope. So yes, I don't deny that Sausage Party has artistic value and moments of insight. But personally, a lot of the time I just found it cringy. Cool world. This gets mentioned a lot for some of its kind of smuttier scenes, but personally, I don't mind it. I actually like the combination of live action and cartoon. And I like that Jack the main character is actually a redeemable, decent enough guy. He's not just a one-note pervert or a seedy scum. It feels like he's legitimately falling in both lust and love with Holly, this cartoon woman. I'm made of ink, but I'm no dream. <gasps> I feel like there was an earnesty to this movie that I appreciated, and I'll review it in more detail in live action cartoon mix-ups if you're curious. Since it's only a dream, indulge your fantasies. And for the dishonorable mentions, Hell and Back. This is actually up there in the worst animated movies of all time? If I ever remake that list, I can guarantee you will see this in the top five. But I've talked about it in the worst claymations of all time, and I'd rather not give it any more attention. Eight Crazy Nights. I've reviewed this one twice, so I'll simply mention it's a personified worst of Adam Sandler with all the charm of a colonoscopy. It's probably the worst thing to ever happen to Hanukkah. As Robin mentioned, its toilet humor's turned up to 11 and the voice acting's like a cheese grater on the ears. Don't be scared! She 
breakdancing? The Drawn Together movie. I like the original Drawn Together series, but this movie's poorly thought out lazy trash compared to the original series, and one of the worst animated movies I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> Food Fight. Oh yeah, this is kind of an adult movie, isn't it? No, it belongs in a museum showcasing criminally insane animators' crimes of nature. It's daytime! Yes, I agree. Moving right along. Anyway, on to number one. And the number one worst adult animated movie is... Jay and Silent Bob's Super Groovy Cartoon Movie. Even the title is terrible. Man, I feel good today, Silent Bob. It's time to get back to work as New Jersey's number one unlicensed gorilla weed merchants. You can tell it's adult because one of the characters is holding a cigarette. You know what's even sadder than a crappy juvenile movie parading as an adult because it's desperately throwing tasteless sex and violence in your face? One that doesn't even feel like it's trying. Like, nothing they do feels like they ever tried in this movie. The animation looks like something I saw in a cheap Newgrounds Flash animation from a nine-year-old trying to annoy the website moderators into banning him. As well as stiff, ugly, lazy animation, the lip-syncing is just trash. Huh? We're coming for you, Blunt Man and Chronic! Wherever you are! The jokes aren't even worth a groan. It's basically just spades of teenage fart and sex humor that reaches the absolute base level of what can even be considered humor. Maybe it's funny to someone out there? Possibly? I've just yet to meet them. Yo, look at that <laughs> blow up. Keep pissing, boy. The story... Well, Jay and Bob win $10 million in the lottery and become superheroes. Nauseatingly repetitive smut jokes and pointless shock violence ensue. Seriously though, I wouldn't even expect this animation in a 2-5 to five minute YouTube video on toilet humour. How do you manage to make Video Brinquado look artistic and sophisticated? There is far better animation on YouTube out there from much smaller, cheaper studios that don't get much more than $1 per thousand views if that. It's a tragedy of Hollywood and society itself that this movie had any actual talent behind it. This movie had actual talent? Shockingly, yes. Because Tara Strong as Cuckknocker is actually okay, and manages to move the character beyond their one-note gimmick. But we all know she was far too talented to be in this movie in the first place. Blunt Man and Chronic. Not again. Her voice was like a momentary respite of peace within the hurricane of mediocrity spilling onto my screen. Mercifully, this movie is only an hour, but it is an hour of torture. The creator, Kevin Smith, was clearly stoned out of his mind when he made this movie, and it saddens me that something this garbage could even be labeled adult in the first place. I personally consider Jay and Silent Bob's super groovy cartoon movie the worst adult animated movie that I'm willing to talk about. And obviously, adult animation is not just adult because it has some shock humor or smutty jokes in it. In fact, a family Pixar movie like Up, Inside Out or Coco could be considered far more adult than these movies. Because adults can connect with the vulnerability, fear and personal struggles of these characters. And they can communicate an adult message that resonates even with the very young. And with the emergence of Netflix, more and more studios are able to give us these real glimmers of humanity and vulnerability from an adult's perspective. And if you feel I missed any lousy adult animated movies or have any different opinions on these, feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.